few words. I hope you're strapped in, because tonight we're having a Back to the Future night. And this is the Back to the Future HQ Words game. I am your host, the Word Queen, Anna McFly Roisman, because I'm fly, baby. Yeah, you can find me here on social media. Now, let me tell you the deets before we get this game, because it's going to be heavy. Before we get this going, tonight I'm going to show you 12 puzzles. When you make it through to your destiny, you'll win some of the prize, which is $1,000. Maybe you'll win enough to buy some drones or a hoverboard, because they were predicted then and we have them now. Kind of. Tonight you'll also be getting five strikes, plus whatever strikes you already have from leveling up on HQ. Yeah, you will. It's time to spin that time machine around my face. Oh. For every spin, I'm going back a year. But really, if you don't spin, will it change the outcome of this game? Think about it. If you don't spin for a letter, would you ever know if you won or lost when you travel back to its time tonight? And will my parents ever meet? Whew, time travel is weird, you know? When you think about it, you lose it. It's time for the first puzzle. The faster you solve, the more points you can earn. We're gonna hit the road! But where we're going, we don't need roads. We just, we need, we need words. We do need words, okay? Your first hint is time machine. Type in the letters N, L, and E. Three letters off the bat. This is the one and only time machine that Doc creates at the beginning of Back to the Future. It's also a car because that's a great way to get around from place to place, right? Or year to year. It's the time machine. You just played trivia? You've heard this already tonight. And the answer is DeLorean. The DeLorean, of course it is. It's that really cool car that you travel through time in. 117,572 solved the puzzle. 13,222 eliminated on DeLorean. Hey, if you're digging tonight's game and you're curious when we're going live again, tap that subscribe button right here. Just give it a little tap, 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 and let me know if it takes you back a few years, huh? We've got some exciting games coming up this week, and I want you here with me when we're live. Also, happy birthday to my brother Abraham. Wish Abraham a happy birthday and also happy birthday Andrew. Gotta wish everyone a happy birthday. I got you guys both DeLoreans. They're outside. Go pick them up. I mostly go by word queen around here but I want you to type in this other pseudonym. There's a very funny moment in the first movie when a character mistakes someone for this name based on what they're wearing. And that's funny because the designer isn't well known yet. Right? Well, at least in, in the scene that this takes place in, what is that pseudonym? And the answer is Calvin Klein. Check it out. It's your name, isn't it? Calvin Klein? She thinks his name is Calvin Klein because his underwear says Calvin Klein. You know, it's very confusing. I get it. 89,856 got it right. 28,205 eliminated. The funniest part of that is that's actually his mom <laughs> calling him Calvin Klein. And that is exactly why I go by Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, sorry. Do you remember this future tech? According to Doc Brown, this is what makes time travel possible. And he would know he made up the name of this. But this is also the core component inside the DeLorean that allows for time travel to happen. Otherwise, it would just be a car. And the answer is flux capacitor. Flux capacitor. Flux capacitor is the answer. Try and say that four times in a row. 67,729! You're still hot in the game. We say goodbye to 23,209. You know when he thought of that? When he hit his head on a toilet. That's when I think of all my best ideas <laughs> on the toilet. Okay, the thing about time traveling in these movies is you could accidentally alter history, even your own. So type in this timeline tweaker. This is an item that you would find in the second movie. It's the MacGuffin of this movie. And it gives Marty McFly a brilliant idea. Or so he thinks. But it sure would be bad if it ended up in the hands of the wrong person. Mm. And the answer is Gray's Sports Almanac. Gray's Sports Almanac. 
He said it way better than I did. He just stared directly at you. Grays, sports, almanac. 31,631 got it right. It looks like 37,028. You just get schooled out of the puzzle. Oh, you're schooled on that one. It's the sports almanac that Biff actually takes in the second movie, right? Because you can go back in time and bet on the sports teams that you already know the outcome to. Okay. Not a good thing, but we're moving on. Sometimes when we meet people, we tend to get nervous, right? We're nervous, and that's just what happens during George's declaration. He mixes up what he's trying to say when he approaches the woman he likes. It happens. Everyone's shy. It's a cute mistake, though, because, you know, otherwise, if it wasn't cute, it would have a very different meaning. Hmm, George's declaration. I'm gonna let George tell you. He's gonna say it. I'm your density. What? What was it? Density? I'm your density. Yes, I'm your density. It's so romantic, right? 29,995 got it right. 3,500 eliminated on I'm your density. He meant that, right? Or did he mean destiny? I don't know. They look very similar when you're looking at them both. I get it, George. There are a lot of things that we saw in the future from these movies, so I'm throwing you another future tech puzzle. This, this puzzle, this is actually my destiny, okay? Because it helps make one of my all-time favorite things. Mm. I know we have similar devices now, but they take a lot longer than this would. We're still waiting on it. We don't have this future tech, or do we? Show me it then. Because I'm talking about a pizza hydrator. Ooh, so good. A pizza rehydrator. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. 16,621 solved the puzzle. 13,578 eliminated. Almost neck and neck on that. So you take like a pocket-sized pizza, you put it in that rehydrator, and boom, you have a hot pizza in like seconds. Could you imagine? I'd keep them in my bag everywhere I went. Wow. It looks like everyone's brains are cooking right now. Mine just did, right? But you just made it halfway through the game, baby. Oh, you started 30 years ago. And now there's only six years left, actually. And the only way we're gonna make it is with this power surge. Charge up your brains, charge up those fingers, type in the answer to this. It's a very specific amount of power that makes things work. And this is crucial, you know, to get back to the future. Have you heard of it? And the answer is 1.21. What? What is it? 1.21 gigawatts! Did he say gigawatts? 1.21 gigawatts. You know, gigawatts, gigawatts to each his own. He says gigawatts. 16,174 got it right. 1,647 eliminated. Those look like very similar numbers. And it's just like GIF or JIF, right? Of today, what do you say? If you say JIF, put a J-I-F in the chat. If you say GIF, give me a G-I-F. I wanna know because I literally have no idea how I even say it. All right, it's always, it's always a throwback Thursday when we're talking about the first movie. Can you recall this 1955 event? Hmm. This event was signif a significant moment for some of the movie's main characters. Marty actually goes back to this event more than once. What is this 1955 event? If you're thinking Disney song, good guess, close. The answer is Enchantment Under the Sea. Oh, it's the dance where Marty's parents actually fall in love, where he choreographs this whole meet. 13,903 got it right, 2,428. You sank, unfortunately, on Enchantment Under the Sea. You went under the sea on that one. You know I'm always talking about how much I love clothes on here. And the same goes for this future fashion. This is something that fans have been developing in real life. It's happening. It's future fashion and it's happening now. It's pretty high tech, but it's 2019, right? Shout out to the Met Gala. It's an updated version of something that Marty wears throughout the movies. But it's great though. It's great for getting around, you know, when you're, when you're time traveling. 
You need some self-lacing Nikes. Ooh, yeah, you do. Doc made these for him for 2015 for those self-lacing Nikes. You don't have to lace them yourself. 11,449, got it right. 2,800 eliminated on self-lacing Nikes. I know you're playing a game and I do hope you win, but I also want you to dream even bigger, okay? Maybe you're destined to have a success story. Everyone is. In these movies, we go back and forth between time periods and we see where some people came from and where they ended up. This is one of those stories that happened to be great. It was a success. But whose was it? And the answer is Mayor Gary Wilson. <laughs> Oh, he became the mayor. He was once a busboy in a diner and he dreamed big. And then he became the mayor of the town. 7,518, got it right. 4,431, eliminated. Oh, we almost have that success story for so many people. It's puzzle 11. We're nearing heaven, which means bedtime for some of you, of course. Hope you don't run into this nighttime visitor. Ooh, there's a lot of spooky stuff happening in the night. Right? And that's the same in this sci-fi world. Is it a dream? Is it reality? Who knows? It's a nighttime visitor. If only he knew what the nighttime visitor was referencing, it wouldn't be so, so scary. But dreams are scary sometimes. And the answer is right here for you. My name is Darth Vader. I am an extraterrestrial from the planet Vulcan. It is Darth Vader from Planet Vulcan. Darth Vader from Planet Vulcan. And let's just get that straight. Darth Vader is not from Planet Vulcan. Planet Vulcan is from Star Trek. Darth Vader is from Star Wars. But you know what? In Back to the Future, that is where he's from. And here in the HQ universe, on Planet Words, it is the nighttime visitor that you have wanted to show up. Welcome to the final puzzle of the night. Oh, you did it. We started tonight with over 150,000 players. And here we are, ready to launch into our own future. Your final hint, it kind of reminds me of us because it's happy family. Oh, what a nice final puzzle. Who are the members of this happy family besides us? You tell me and type it in. What's most important is that they're happy no matter what time period it is. This one's for the win. Is it, is it gonna be your density? And the answer, the final answer of the night is Doc, Clara, Jules, and Vern. It's Doc's whole family. But you know what? I'm feeling really happy for our family right now. We've got a family of 4,495 of you. You just won HQ Words, Back to the Future. Ooh, you're going back to that bank account and you're gonna get a little money in it. And how much money are you gonna get tonight? Oh, you're getting 23 cents. You know what you could buy with 23 cents? You could invest in a hoverboard because maybe a real one's gonna come out someday. And in third place, we've got Cardiac Cat 20. You're going home with 23 cents. Asterly in second place with 23 cents. And in first place, hey, check it out. It's our buddy Owen. Owen, I've seen you up on that board before. Congratulations. You were the fastest. You went back to the future and back again to now, that made sense in my brain. This is the game for tonight. Congrats to all of our winners. Okay, it was a heavy puzzle. It was a heavy game, but you handled it like a pro. Some of you even solved it 88 miles per hour. That's just a prediction. I'm doing words here, okay? Not math, come on. I'm ordering an Uber now and it says it's a, it's a DeLorean, so I don't know, this could be my destiny. It could. I have been your host, Anna Roisman. You can find me here in the past, the present, the future, all over social media. I will see you tomorrow night at 9.30 for more HQ words. I love you so much, word nerds. You're brilliant in any time period. Okay, I gotta make like a tree and get out of here. Bye.